Hello. <clears throat> What's up, everyone? My name is Tanner Babcock, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That's right. I am recording a video from my Wayland session. No, it's not black magic. It's not uh, rocket science either. It's actually two little commands running at the exact same time. Helps me create videos on Wayland. Here's this little script that I made that is running right now. Here's this little function called record. I just use this record function with this uh, ampersand here and then I run a long WF recorder command so that both this line and this line run at the exact exact same time so really I'm recording the audio and the video separately I think WF recorder can do audio but that just won't work for me, so I'm using Pulse Audio, PA Record, to record my voice right now. And once I'm done recording, I'm going to open up a little program called Caden Live, and I'm going to synchronize the audio and the video tracks. So, so I can end up with a real video of me talking on my Wayland session. So this video might be a little weird, um, my audio might become out of sync, and so then I would start to look like an old Italian film, and my, uh, my lips and my voice would become out of sync. That might happen, I'm not sure. Uh, the video might just look weird. It's kind of an experiment. I'm just gonna try it out, see how it works. All of the little tests I've made seem to work fine. Um, like here, I'll just open HTOP. Okay, see that? Can you hear me pressing the keys? See the blue bar moving? It syncs up pretty well, doesn't it? Man, that is some real bleeding edge shit right there. Screen recording, audio recording, showing a uh, showing my picture through my webcam, putting that into MPV. Some bleeding edge shit. I didn't think I was going to get to this point. I just didn't think it was possible to make videos on Wayland. Uh, I'm not using OBS, I'm not using Pipewire, and as you can see, I'm running a Void Linux, so there's no System D here. I do have a Dbus installed and running, though. Anyway, I'm just going to get this out of the way real quick. Here is my GitHub Sponsors profile. If there is anyone out there, anyone at all out there who would want to give me some money so that I can make better work, so that I can work more on my website, so that I can have uh, better resources for testing and uh, continuous integration, so I can get a VPN that's not the free Proton VPN. I already have one sponsor, my friend Jonah. If you choose to sponsor me, you can give me $4 a month, or $20 a month, or $100 a month. And you can sponsor me right on GitHub right here. So that would be amazing if there's anyone out there at all who wants to give me some money. <laughs> I would appreciate it because I need some money. <laughs> anyway, now that we got that out of the way, the reason I'm making this video today is I want to show off some really cool Rust programs. All of these are going to be command line utilities. 
Uh, they are all written in Rust, and most of them, not all of them, but most of them actually do function as drop-in replacements for the original GNU core utils. Like uh, this program, LSD, is supposed to be a better LS. <clears throat> this program is completely backwards compatible with the original GNU core utils LS. I already have this program installed, so like if I just type a regular LS, that's my that's my home directory. That's the file listing in my home directory. But what if I type LSD? LSD gives us these really nice icons to work with. It integrates with the environment variable LS colors. Yeah, <laughs> that's my LS colors. There's another GitHub repo where you can get a cool LS colors like that. But yeah, this is LSD. Um, it has all kinds of different icons for various directories, various file extensions. Like I could go into the root of my uh, websites repo and I type LSD. And as you can see, it has the little uh, little elephant for PHP. It has this folder for the node modules. Um, has this for JavaScript. These uh, executable files like tnailer, thumbnailer, or polar, these are scripts that I have written for my website. So like this is just a script. And tnailer is just a script. The LSD program has functionality which it determines if one of these files is an executable file. So if it has no extension and it's an executable file, it will show this little shell icon right there. But what's really cool about LSD is this. I'll type LSD tree. These view icons aren't showing up, but this is the tree view, which the LSD program does really, really well. The thing that I just mentioned with uh, the executable files, that bit of code was contributed by me. I contributed to the LSD project. You can look at it on GitHub and you can find me under the contributors on GitHub. Oh yeah, this is the node modules directory, so I'm not gonna scroll through that. <laughs> but like, if I go into resources, I'll type LSD tree. These are all of the HTML files that I use for views on my website. Here's the core library of my website. It shows these little keys. If it's a license.md file, composer.json shows the, the PHP elephant. <clears throat> what else could I look at? Though? I could look at my learning repo and type LSD. <clears throat> What does the long file listing look like? Like if we type lsdla, what does that look like? <clears throat> this is really cool. I really like this. What lsd does is uh, these dates right here, these nice human readable dates. These, the color of these dates get brighter and brighter uh, the more recent it is. Like this folder, the .git folder, it was modified today. 
So as you can see, this line is a little bit greener. We could also type LSD, LA, and add the tree option. And that would give us some output like this. Let's look at it that way. So we can see the tree view and the long listing. And it will recursively go into all of the directories that are underneath the current directory. It is showing me like this junk right here. This is the .git directory. I'm pretty sure it's possible to have the LSD program not show you the .git directory or a node modules directory. But yeah, as you can see, that is basically the difference between LS and LSD. If we wanted to build LSD, I have my own personal fork of LSD right here that is on my GitLab. If I wanted to compile one of these Rust programs, you would compile it like this. You would type cargo build dash dash release. And I've already built that, but so like, let's go into target. Let's just remove the release directory so that this thing will actually build LSD. Cargo build release. This is how you compile any Rust project. You just do a git clone of the repository, wherever you want. You go into that repository, there should always be a cargo.toml file. Here's LSD. Here's the cargo.toml for LSD. Yeah, compiling these programs can take a little bit because uh, they have a lot of dependencies. Cargo is a package manager for Rust, so Cargo can fetch all of these dependencies and then compile them into the final Rust project's uh, binary, executable binary. almost done here compiling LSD here's another program that's a lot like LSD it's called EXA I don't believe EXA has icons but uh, people still seem to really like it I mean it looks really cool it does have a uh, these underlines it does have these nice uh, headers if you do the long listing, it will show you these headers. The documentation is really solid. So it doesn't seem like EXA is as compatible with the original GNU Core Utils LS as uh, LSD is. See, this has finished compiling. So now we gotta go into target. Then we have to go into release. And now we'll run this binary that has been created. LSD. And there you go, that's the exact same output. Once you're done uh, compiling the Rust binary, you might want to strip it. So you could type strip LSD. Like, look, you type LSD LA. This binary, the release binary for the LSD project is 2.9 megabytes. 
but if we did a strip of LSD, and then we'll do LSD LA, it is now 2.3 megabytes. So as you can see, this, uh, this binary is significantly smaller than it was. If we hadn't have compiled the release version of the program and just typed, and just typed cargo build, this, bi <clears throat> this binary would be a lot bigger than uh, 2.9 megabytes. It'd be like four or six megabytes or something. But let's install EXA. What is this repo called? OG ham slash EXA. Do a git clone git at github.com OG ham EXA dot git. So we've cloned the EXA project. And now let's compile it. There's our cargo.toml. It has this uh, nice little rust icon. So type cargo build release. Yeah, I'm so happy I got this video recording working on a Wayland session. This window manager is called River. And this terminal that I am using here is called Foot. This terminal, I don't think I really covered foot in my terminals video, but this terminal, like, you start it when you start your uh, Wayland session with foot dash dash server. So this terminal runs as a server, and then you make foot clients. So, as you can see, these are all of the foot clients I have open right now. And they are all connected to the foot server. Foot is really, really fast. And I mean, Wayland, I feel like River, I see this more than Sway. But like, I mean, just look at this stuff. Like when you hold down a key and just keep holding down that key, it's faster. It's faster than XORG and it's faster than Sway. That's pretty crazy. I mean, XORG is some really old code from like the 80s, like the late 80s. In Wayland, people call it alpha quality software. It's already so much faster, so much easier to use. Now, EXA has finished compiling. We can go to the target release directory. And there's EXA. So let's run EXA. Yep. <laughs> let's run EXA help. Here's all of the options we can supply to EXA. It looks like EXA does have icons. EXA. Yeah, just EXA dash dash icons. Oh, nice. Just like LSD. So I guess EXA does have icons. That's pretty cool. I might have to make a pull request for EXA. <laughs> so I can get it to match LSD. See, it looks a little bit different. Uh, I wanted to include this folder icon in my pull request, but I couldn't. <laughs> they wanted this default folder icon. So now I can type strip exa. Well, let's see how much exa is. Exa is 1.6 megabytes. So it's actually smaller than LSD. Now let's type a strip exa. Let's see how big it is now. 1.4 megabytes. That's pretty good. Now to install this binary that we've compiled, we can just type sudo cp exa user bin exa. 
I'll enter my password there. Now I just type exa. Exa LA. So the long listing for exa looks like that. Unable to determine time zone. No such file or directory. Yeah, <laughs> I get that sometimes on void Linux. Let's go to my home directory. Type exa. Exa LA icons. Ooh, that's really nice. It looks a lot like LSD. Um, I really like this long listing. I think I like this long listing better than LSD's long listing. Uh, this column of the output is the file permissions. So it looks like each bit of the file permissions string has its own color. There's the D for directory, the red W for write, and uh, this X is for execute, executable. So yeah, exa is really cool. Close that. There's another one I wanted to look at. And uh, it is called rip grep, a drop in replacement for GNU grep. It respects the git ignore files in your repositories. All of these tools that we've looked at, like a LSD in exa. And uh, all of these tools are cross-platform. That means you don't have to be on Linux. You could be on Mac or even Windows, and you could still compile and use these programs. So that's pretty cool. Um, you could trick out your Windows shell <laughs> or your Mac shell. Let's look at the cargo.toml for rip grep. The name of the project is called rip grep, but the command is just called rg. I really like that. So like if we go to tbcom you know and we'll type uh, go to source Type grep rnw dot uh, art editor. Oh, wait. That doesn't work. We'll just do a grep rnw art editor. So here's grep. It has these nice colors and it is showing me all of the locations of this string art editor it's running recursively in my source directory of my uh, website repository so like it's telling me art editor exists in the javascript admin art editor.js it exists in css admin admin base and in the view admin input row view component. If I wanted to type grep rnw uh, context equals five art editor, I would get these same matches, but as you can see, it shows the preceding five lines and the succeeding five lines around the line that has the matching string. So you can get, this is really nice, so you can get a better idea of, you know, what is actually in these files. Because if you don't have the context option, all you see is this. Sometimes you want to see all of this. But let's look at rip grep. We'll just type rg there. 
it's going to give us this help message. Let's just type RG art editor. Now it's already giving us matches. The output is a little bit different from grep, but as you can see, it automatically recurses into the subdirectories. I think we can also give it the uh, context option, context for art editor. Yep, it works with that option and it shows us the, the other lines in these files. What other options are there for RG? RG is really fast too. It's a uh, I think it's faster than grep. It does have more options than grep and I think it is backwards compatible with grep. I think you can specify your own colors too for RG like for the file names and the matches and stuff. Here's the LSD tree. I wonder if uh, exa has a tree. Exa tree. Yep, it does. There's exa. Type exa tree L icons. And it will show us the long file listing with dates, usernames, a nice human readable file size, and uh, these nice icons. And it looks a lot like the output from LSD up here. But yeah, Exa is really nice. I might start using Exa instead. <laughs> There's another command here. Um, it's just called FD, is the name of the program. And as you can see, it's a simple, fast, and user-friendly alternative to find the find command. This command is very fast. Let's see how find works. What about my home directory? I've got to have a million files inside of my home directory. It has to take so long, right? So if I just type find, and it's still going. It's going through git void packages dot cargo dot emacs dot d. Yep, it's done. How many seconds did that take? Five, six seconds? I don't know. But if I just type fd, God damn. FD gives us these really nice colors that uh, change depending on the file extension. It shows is this it shows this same uh, color, this teal color for the name of the directories. I think it's a little bit faster than find. I mean it seemed faster. Like I could go into my websites directory and type FD and it's done in like a nanosecond. <laughs> yeah, this is much nicer than find. It uses uh, the LS colors, I think. I think that's why these uh, file names match. Yeah, the output from FD has the same colors as the output from LSD and EXA too. There's FIND, there's FD, easier to type than FIND. So yeah, if you wanted to like this command LS, it's still it's still just running user bin ls. What if I want to alias ls to my new command lsd? 
which I like a lot better and is really just a huge improvement over the original LS. You just do LSD. If I wanted to group directories first, just type group directories first. That's an option. And I'll just make that alias. So now, if I type ls, it runs the lsd command instead of user bin ls. And it puts all of the directories first, which I really like. So for these new, fancy, flashy Rust programs that you can compile and install, we just compiled one you can make these shell aliases that use these new commands. So like instead of grep, I could just alias grep, alias grep to rg. So when I type grep, it'll just give me rg. <clears throat> so if I want to find something like art editor, I would just type grep art editor and it's running uh, it's running rg rip grep instead of the original grep if i wanted to run the original grep you you can just type user bin grep art editor here r and w art editor Right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's slow. Maybe that's how slow it is. <laughs> Maybe you should use rip grep instead of grep. <laughs> right, so, what did we look at? We look at FD, we've looked at uh, LSD, we've looked at EXA, we've looked at rip grep. Now, I really want to look at this because this program is really, really cool. Bat, a cat's clone with wings, <clears throat> written in Rust. Has syntax highlighting. I think that's the Monokai color scheme. Has Git integration. It shows you a little Git gutter there with your uh, modified and added lines. It can also show these non-printable characters, like uh, spaces and tabs and returns. This also works as a drop-in replacement for cat, the GNU program cat. So like I wanted to do user bin cat x init rc. There's my x init rc. If I wanted to type bat x init rc, god damn, this looks a, not, a lot nicer. It's already in an interactive pager. I think this is less, but it shows you this file name right up here. It shows you uh, these line numbers. I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll right now, so that's really nice. This is Bat, a cat clone with wings. And like, I'm pretty sure, you know, if you wanted to pipe something into another command with Bat, you know, it would work just like cat. I don't think it shows the, uh, I don't think it shows all this markup and the line numbers and stuff if you, uh, if you were to pipe this output into another command. So like if I typed bash bat zshrc and piped that into wc, give me 253 lines of output. If I look at ZSHRC again, it is actually 253 lines. If BAT had printed all of these extra lines, then WC would have returned 
a much bigger number than 253. So yeah, bat. Bat is just awesome. I love bat. And there's so many, there's so many more of these. You can just go looking around on GitHub for uh, Rust utilities, new Rust utilities that are really cool. Here's another one I want to look at really quick, really quick. It's called uh, Prox. It's kind of like Top. It has these nice colors. By default, it sorts these processes by a PID. But like, if I wanted to type Prox Tree, then it will show me all of these processes in the tree view. So that's really cool. I would say this is, you know, a lot easier to work with than than top. Now I'm sure there's a lot more options. Oh. No man page, prox help. Yeah. Here's all of the options. All of these nifty Rust programs have a lot of uh, options for these programs. Uh, I think LSD actually has a config file that you can use. Yeah, config.yaml. This is the default config file for LSD. So you can configure LSD that way. That's pretty cool. Well, uh, my video disappeared. My webcam disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> there I am again. Well, yeah, that's kind of strange, but Anyway, I better wrap up this video. I hoped you guys all enjoyed taking a look at some of these cool projects on GitHub. Uh, I cannot recommend any of them highly enough. They are awesome. They are just awesome. I would love to have all of them installed on my machine. I think it's just great. LSD tree. It's kind of slow, but like FD, that's like blazing fast. Look at how fast that is. That's crazy. Even compared to LSD, yeah. So if you guys want to upgrade your Linux experience or even your Mac OS or uh, Windows experience, you should really check out some of these projects. You can compile and install them with Cargo. They're really easy to use and they're cross-platform. Anyway, I think I'm gonna end this video here. End it on a high note. Here's my GitHub profile. Please, please, please check out my GitHub. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like my content. Well, Anyway, guys, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. My name is Tanner Babcock. Thanks for watching.